Hello out there, my name is Milesy and welcome to my channel. I'm trying out a new camera today and I'm not really sure how much I like it because I can't force the white balance to stay where I put it. It seems to always want to uh, move around even when I don't have it on auto, so we'll see. But I've also got a set of Montmarty, I think that's how that's pronounced, Montmart, something like that, fluorescent acrylic paint set. It says it glows under black lights, and we can test that right now and see that, oh boy, does it ever. They glow really nicely, even through the package. So let's take a look on the back first. So we have yellow, orange, pink, red, magenta, purple, blue, and green. I also have another set from them. It's a metallic paint set. Uh, the same size, eight pieces, 36 mils. And we have magenta, purple, blue, green, silver, gold, bronze, and copper. Another thing I've noticed about this camera, it doesn't have a focus. It seems like it has one set focal length. So I'm actually going to really quickly switch out the camera, I think. Okay, we're back to this one. You guys can see this a lot better. That one, unfortunately, is not going to work for this, I don't think. It might work for something else. We will see, and if not, well, I guess I've got a decent face cam, finally. But these are, let's go ahead and take a look, some acrylic paints. And I get this one. They come in these really nice microphones in my way. In these really nice big tubes, they've got some protective foil. So if we peel that off, yep, we can see some paint in there. That is very, very shiny, and I accidentally blocked some out, but there we go. And it looks like these have got mica pigment is what it's telling me. It's also got what looks like some light fastness. Let me see if I can find the key for that. So they've got two stars and a half moon, which normally is... Okay, so I'm guessing the fluorescent ones are going to be transparent. These ones are going to be semi-opaque. That is my guess. Without seeing anything on here that explains the key. But I feel like that's, what's, that's what these are going to mean. They're going to be somewhat light fast. The fluorescent ones are going to be extremely transparent. But these ones should have a little bit of coverage. Also, my green thing that I have here is to just get rid of any reflection that was coming on there from the lights, although I might switch it out to another one. I got a few just to see which ones I like. So yeah, the green, or the, the green, the fluorescent ones. So these ones say mica, these ones do not, which means, I guess, if you have a problem with mica powder, you know not to use these, which is nice. So let's pop this one open and see what we have. And that looks, just kind of looking at it, it looks like it's not going to be super duper bright. Or opaque, I guess, is the better word. So, I've also got a couple of mixed media notebooks. And I think a good way to test them out will be to swatch some paints in it. So this is six by nine, 117 pounds, 50 sheets, and it's perforated. I didn't even notice that. So I'm not sure what I'm going to be using these sketchbooks for, or I guess these uh, art books, because they're for mixed media. But we can at least swatch some paints in it real quick. So let's go ahead and do that and see how well it holds up to acrylic paint. So first, 
Let's take a look at the fluorescent ones and see how these are. Let's take a look at the back. So, floral finish, quick drawing, smooth consistency. Let's see, let's take a look. So yeah, they are fairly transparent. There is a little smudge on the page and I can definitely see that through it. Cleans off of the brush pretty easily. It has, it's, it is very smooth, but it also has a weird sticky consistency. Like it doesn't quite want to come off of the brush while I'm painting. That is intensely transparent though. The yellow one doesn't seem like it because it's so bright. It's actually brighter than the paper it's on. And you can see that again. When you look at it this way, you can see the red and even the orange is a little bit brighter than the paper it's on. Or the yellow and the orange are a little bit brighter than the paper that it's on. So that's why the yellow looks a lot more uh, a lot more opaque than the other ones do. I do like how the pink, the red, and the magenta are all very different though. They're not the same. I will be interested to see how well the next two glow. Because blues and violets are really hard to make properly fluorescent like this. And I'm not exactly sure why, but I think it has something to do with them being so close to the uh, ultraviolet end of the spectrum to begin with that under UV light they just kind of disappear. So there's a very transparent purple. Oh that one's really bright too. That one is intense. The camera can barely see that one. And we'll look at these again and you'll be able to see how dark the blue and the purple are. You can see that. The green is also really bright. That yellow is just intensely bright. Let me put it on photo so it's taller. So yeah, you can see how dark the purple is especially. And then the green and the yellow are just hyper intense. And when we shine our light on it, everything does glow really brightly. It helps that the paper doesn't too, so that is nice. Everything does glow really intensely. The red, the pink, and the magenta are all slightly different shades. The pink really, or I think that's actually the red. I can't tell. Yeah, the red is really intense. And then that yellow and the green just appear to be emitting light. The blue and the purple, the blue kind of shines. The purple really doesn't. It just kind of gets darker. And I do think that's because of where it is on the spectrum. So that was the fluorescent ones. Let's take a look at these metallic ones. Let's see how they are. This one too, very creamy, very sticky on the brush. It looks a lot like some of the stuff I've mixed. It's not quite as glittery though, but it is a lot more opaque. So yeah, if you're not careful, it does seem to get picked back up by the brush. The brush is nice and shiny, but on the paper, it doesn't seem to be quite as shiny. We'll see when we get into these other colors though, how that looks. As it dries, some of them have got a little bit more shiny. That top one, what is it? That's the copper. The copper isn't quite as shiny when the light hits it, but the other ones, the gold and the silver especially, are pretty nice. Now let's get into these other ones. It says it should be semi-opaque, but that's about as transparent as the other ones. So it doesn't really want to go on very thick is another thing. So a little bit does seem to go a really long way. And what they seem like to me 
is that they're a little bit less metallic, especially the other colors, and just more of a satin. They're less metallic and more satin, I think. They've kind of got this diffuse matte look, but they shine back a little bit of light. Interesting, okay. Not quite what I had expected, but I think we can come up with some interesting things to do with these. Also, uh, they did say that they are quick drying. I can confirm that. They have dried really quickly. I just turned off the camera and realized, wait, I've got one more to film, but I just painted on the notebook. They are already dry, all of them. So they did live up to that promise, at least. They did dry really quickly, which might be why they feel so sticky and weird. Also, the paper seems to have held up, but we'll see how it behaves under watercolor. So I wanted to do something that used both of the paint sets, both the metallic one and the neon one. And I kind of had an idea that's been kind of in my head for a while, so it was really easy to figure out what I wanted to do. So I looked up some crystals just to get the shape right, and I decided I wanted to try to do the crystals in metallic and then do some of the background elements with the neon to see what they look like together next to one another. And this, this little sketchbook, whatever you want to call it, I was really pleased with this. I have used it now on the acrylics and with the watercolor. It doesn't hold up super amazing, but it's not awful to use. I kind of feel like this is the sort of sketchbook that would have a lot of character once it was used for paint because the pages kind of stiffen up and get a little bit crinkly, but they're not so crinkly that I couldn't scan them or that they didn't look very good afterward. The only thing that I had a problem with this one over was that I was using a whole bunch of metallic paint and neon paint, which neither of them at all cooperated with my scanner. It looked so bad and was so nasty that I wound up having to take a really janky picture uh, with my phone in order to upload it. So this is something that I've never really tried to paint before. So I had a whole bunch of references on my phone, which if you're not using references, you're severely handicapping yourself. I think a lot of people go through this phase in their art journey where they're too good for references. You don't need references. References are a crutch. References just teach you how to copy, which yes, they do. And that's the point. Uh, always use references. Even if you think you know what you're doing, it's always really handy to have a reference nearby. Photo references are good. They're perfectly good. Having the real thing is better, but in this case, I just had some pictures up on Google that I was kind of trying to copy for the, for the effect on the crystals, and I think it turned out really well. The problem that I had, of course, was that I only had eight colors to work with, and there's no black and there's no white in this set. There's a silver, but the silver isn't really going to brighten up the color the way white will, so what I wound up doing was mixing it with water to thin it out and make it a little bit more transparent. And that kind of helped by using the white of the page showing through to help it make it look a little bit brighter, a little bit lighter, and get a little bit of that shine on there. So I did that with a few of the colors. I would lay down the darker color, and then I would just add a little bit more water here and there to lighten them up. And I mixed a few colors together to get more deeper shades of pink and more varied shades of pink, because the colors, I really do love the colors, but they're not very... 
There's not a lot of them, I think is the best way to put it. We've got a good variety. So I'm not even going to say that they're not varied. We just don't have a lot to work with. So this is one of those sets where knowing how to mix paint and knowing your color theory really come in handy. And later on, I wind up needing some darker shades and I have to get creative with that as well. But it was around this point where I wasn't really sure if what I was doing was working because I couldn't get those really intense shines and the metallic nature of the paint isn't super metallic. It's more satin. Normally metallic paints, and you'll see this on Amazon reviews, for paints, for pencils, for inks, anything that has metallic uh, properties or something like that, a lot of times will have gold flake or silver flake or similar, and that's why they're more expensive than just regular pencils or paints. These ones use mica, and so you're not going to get that actual metallic shine. You're going to get that more muted shine that we saw in the video where I was mixing my own paints because I think I mentioned this at the beginning, these feel very similar to the paints that I mixed myself and that I've been making using mica powder, which is a new adventure for me. I'm fairly new to mixing my own paints, but it's really not that difficult and it feels very similar to that. But the paints overall, I really liked them. I thought the colors were really nice. They mixed and they blended really nice. When I added them to water, they thinned out really nicely as well. And everything just kind of came together in the end and looked more or less like what I had pictured when I started this. As for the paper itself, I did talk a little bit about this. I think this was also right around the point where I realized it wasn't going to hold up super great, even under the acrylic. I think I mentioned in the watercolor one, I think that one's gone up at this point, that it seemed to get oversaturated at some point and just quit taking the paint. And I kind of worried with the amount of paint that I had mixed with water that it was going to start doing the same. So I had to start getting kind of creative with how I was mixing going forward. And I needed some darker colors for this base. And at first I mixed, I think like the bronze and the copper, but it wasn't going to get any darker than that. Anything else on the more natural scale was just going to make it more intensely gold, if anything. So I wound up adding some blue and some purple to it to really darken it up. And I think that worked really well. Uh, I had a whole bunch of the paints left over because like I said at the beginning, a little bit goes a long way. I definitely poured out more paint than I needed on every single one of the uh, pans in my palette, which that's kind of a bad habit of mine because I don't like it, especially if I'm mixing paint. I don't like to have to try to remix the paint. I always like to have a little bit more than I thought I needed. But sometimes if I'm just pouring the paint out to use it straight up like this blue, I didn't need to pour all of that out. I probably very easily could have just used it off of the tube. You're not really supposed to do that though. It's kind of one of those things where it's less of a rule and more of a you'll probably damage your paint kind of thing because you'll hear a lot of people uh, especially to beginning artists say you're not supposed to do this or you're supposed to do that when what they mean is I don't like the technique you're using do it this way. So generally the only rules that I tend to follow are will this damage my tools? Yes, I should probably follow that rule. So here is another one of the really dark browns. I took the dark one that I had used from the foreground down below, and I think I just added heaps of purple to it. And I think that's how I wound up with this really deep, rich color. Unfortunately, the palette was completely off screen for this entire thing, so you couldn't really see the mixing. 
But one thing I did notice, and I think I mentioned this as well at the beginning, is it at times feels like the paintbrush is picking up the paint instead of moving it. And I could really see that in these bigger sections on the background where there were just a lot of uh, brush strokes and less of what I wanted in terms of texture. Where instead of getting kind of this clumpy texture, I just got this really brushed texture. And watering the paints down like I did on the crystal did seem to help that. So I guess if you want to avoid that brushy texture, using a little bit of water will help, but you don't really want to water it down too much because then you lose all of your opacity. And then for the mushrooms, I thought they'd look really pretty uh, in the neon. So I was, I was just kind of freehanding these, kind of going for almost an Easter egg look, I think. I didn't want any of them to be identical. But I did want them to all have the same color palette, I guess. So I was doing them all at once with the, uh, the same color, the same way I had done the crystal to make sure that everything had all of the colors that I wanted. And I still missed one of the colors on one of the mushrooms, but oh well. And these ones aren't quite as intense as the simple paints that I have used before, but they did have a trouble, or they did have trouble showing up on the camera really badly, especially the more I put down. It seemed like the more I put down, the more the camera tried to compensate for everything else. And the brighter the mushrooms get, the less you can see the crystals. It's almost like the camera kept really trying to compensate for that. And this is the this is the Logitech one because I did switch them around during the video. So this was the Logitech one filming this and then it was the new handheld cam filming at the sides. And even the Logitech one, which is very much better than the handheld one, it cannot tell the difference between the I think this was the red and the pink. Either the red and the pink or the orange or the pink. I actually can't tell, and neither can the camera. It all kind of looks the same, which is a little unfortunate. But this turned out really nice. I was really pleased with it, even if I could not get a good picture. So unfortunately, this one won't make prints. There won't be a pattern of this one. A lot of the ones that I turned out, or that I wind up really liking, are getting turned into prints and patterns eventually, but this one just because I can't get a good picture the paper is too warped to get a photograph and when I try to scan it it just turns white and the scanner couldn't see anything so unfortunately that is what we have there and then like always I just went ahead and inked after I did all of the painting that just seemed to be the better way to do it it behaved a lot better and I did not really leave hardly any time for this to dry. I think I cut out maybe a minute or two in between doing that little mushroom there in the corner and then coming in to do the inking. When this says that it is quick dry, it meant it. This was so quick. So it makes it a really nice paint for layering. You can go through and just do layer after layer and you won't muddy things up because everything is already dry by the time you want to get back to it. And it turned out really nice. As I was doing the inking though, uh, I'm still really struggling with getting used to this. I think I actually did this one before the more recent sketch pages where I was using multiple pens. This one was just, I wanted to ink and I didn't want to use the brush. So I was, I think, just using the one millimeter and wasn't getting too experimental with the line art. And I think I wasn't getting very experimental too because I was still hoping that I might be able to get a good picture of this to turn into a pattern. So I didn't want to ruin it with accidentally screwing up my lines. But that didn't really matter. I probably should have become a little bit more adventurous with it. 
So I just added some highlights in there to get some of that shine that was lacking from the weird lack of metallicness uh, with my gel pen. And that, I think, you can't see it at all, but that's what really helped bring it all together. But I really like this one. I'm very pleased with how it turned out. I will put affiliate links for these paints down in the description below. If you want to check them out for yourself, I really recommend them. They're great. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, all that fun stuff. And I will see you next time. Bye!